Hello and thank you for watching another video here. We're going to look at another single population uh, hypothesis test on a mean and sigma is uh, unknown. So uh, because that standard deviation is unknown, uh, the only difference between this test and the other ones that we've done um, where we knew the standard deviation, the only difference is that now we have to use the t distribution instead of the z distribution. So let's get into it. Our local fire department has a goal of responding to house fires in 10 minutes or less. In order to determine whether or not they're achieving their goal, we take a sample of 40 response times uh, to test. The most recent sample provided a mean of 10.6 and a standard deviation of 2.1. Formulate the test and okay, let's just go through everything. So part one, null and alternative. Well, we already know this is a one-tailed test, so that's a bit of a giveaway. I know that we're testing uh, against a value of 10 minutes. Oops. <clears throat> if I can be a little bit less messy, that would be helpful. Now, is this an upper tail or a lower tail test? Well, in this case, our goal here is to respond to house fires in 10 minutes or less. I want to see if we have evidence to show that there's a problem. So our test in this case is going to be the null is that yes, we are achieving our goal. And the alternative is that no, we are not achieving our goal. So if our evidence supports, for my justification here, if the evidence supports the null hypotheses, then I'm comfortable in saying that yes, we ha are achieving our goal. We are no more than 10 minutes. It's equal to or it's less than, so we're okay. Uh, if the evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, well, then we have a problem that we should probably fix. So, uh, what do we want to do next? Let's uh, perform this test. We'll do alpha 05, level of significance. You know, let's do something different. We always do alpha 05. Let's just do this at the alpha 03 level of significance and see what happens. Maybe that won't change anything. I actually, I have no idea. Uh, so, that's, uh, that's all set up. Now let's perform the rest of the test. So, let's uh, start with our test statistic. X bar minus mu over s root n. So our sample mean is 10.6. Our hypothesized value is 10. Standard deviations 2.1. Sample size was 40. Now let's just push some buttons. 10.6 minus 10 divided by 2.1 over root 40. 1.8. 1.8 is our test statistic. Now we want to, uh, let's find a p-value. Well, let's do a p-value and a critical value for this one. So our p-value, we'll go to our table. We're doing an upper tail test, so we want the probability to the upper tail. And as it turns out, oh, this is still left over from the last exercise. As it turned out, these t tables, they do give us that upper tail probability. So we don't have to make any adjustments as we would have had to do if we were using the z table. Uh, oh, we need our degrees of freedom. Our sample size in this one, let me just go back quickly, our sample size was 40. And so that means our degrees of freedom would be 40 minus 1 or 39. Now, going to the t distribution, you'll find out very quickly that we lack some detail at these higher levels. I don't have 39, but I do have 40. And, you know, is there really any harm? What's going on with my pen here? Is there really any harm in rounding between 40 and 41? Well, if we compare even between 30 and 40 or 40 and 50, the difference of 10 degrees of freedom uh, in those critical values, those differences are really only occurring at the third decimal place. So not losing a lot of accuracy here if we round it from 30 to 40, uh, 39 to 40, uh, as, as is the case. So well, all we need to do now for this, uh, for this exercise is isolate just that, what's happening with my pen? We just isolate those values of interest and the corresponding probabilities and ignore everything else in this table. We don't need any of this stuff. And now we just want to find where is our test statistic. 
So our test statistic was 1.8. So coming through this row, 1.8 is somewhere in between here. So then if we come up, up here, now I find that, well, my p-value is going to be somewhere between, uh oh, this is going to cause me a problem. p-value is going to be something less than 0 0.05, but greater than 0 0.025. Huh. This is what I get for changing the level of significance. Um, p-value, okay, let's copy this over. So the p-value is less than 0 0.05, but it's greater than 0.025. So we, <laughs> we see the problem. Having changed this uh, to 0.03 at the last minute uh, was a mistake because now I can't actually draw a conclusion based on the, the approximations that we have to get uh, using the t-distribution. Well, here I can see it's less than 0.05, that's fine, but it's greater than 0.025. I don't have enough information here uh, to, to know whether or not I can reject or not. So my bad, I shouldn't have changed things right at the beginning. So you know what, I'm going to come back here if it's okay and I'm going to change this to an alpha of 0.05 as it originally was. Now I can draw my exact conclusion because that p-value I know is without a doubt less than 0.05. So, with this information, I can reject that null hypothesis. My p-value is less than 0.05, so I can comfortably reject. Now, hopefully on an exam, I would never do that to my students, given alpha um, that is inconsistent with something that is to be found in the t-tables. Uh, this is why we often stick with 0.05, because it's an easy number to work with, and we don't have any silly surprises. Uh, okay, let's let's do the critical value approach. So again, I'll work with this alpha of 0.05. So that T is going to be 0 0.05. And this is 39 degrees of freedom, although we're going to be working with 40. So if we go back to our T tables. And so here I'm going to start with my probability of 0 0.05 and come down. That gives me a critical value of 1.684. So if I come back here, 1.684. If we look at a T distribution that looks something like this, here is 1.684, and I'm going to reject for any value greater than 1.684. My test statistic is 1.8, and so it's somewhere up here in that rejection space. So thankfully, we get the same conclusion at a alpha 0.05, a level of significance. Okay, so uh, we have evidence that supports the alternative here, uh, which means that there's a problem here, guys. You're not meeting your goal of responding to these house fires in 10 minutes or less, so we better take some action. Okay, good. That's it. Sorry for that little mistake there. Just assume the whole time that we were working with alpha 0.05. Uh, An alpha of 0.03 would not work, uh, given the limitations of the t-tables. Okay, thank you. Uh, see you again. Bye-bye.